Hi class, it is about two thirds through the semester and I just wanted to say hi. I hope you're doing well. Um, please email me or let me know if you're having any issues so that I can try to help you. For the next few lectures, I had to record them in a slightly different manner. So I'm hoping that they'll work out okay, but I just wanted to give you that disclosure before I try to record them and put them on YouTube. Okay, so now I'm gonna say goodbye and start the presentation. So I'm sharing my screen with you, and we're going to talk about chapter 10, which is the Caribbean Islanders and South Americans. So Caribbean Islanders and South Americans, chapter 10. This is a map of the Caribbean islands. You can see the Caribbean Sea and some of the islands, Jamaica, Dominican Republic, Dominica, St. Lucia, and then there is South America. Background, more than 1,000 tropical islands. Many have been claimed by a European country. Um, the Virgin Islands, for example, are under US control and Martinique is under control of France. Because of the rich ethnic background of the Caribbean Islanders, the population is extremely diverse. Puerto Rico, so we'll start in Puerto Rico. Because Puerto Ricans are U.S. citizens, they can come and go from the U.S. as they please. Thus, their presence in the U.S. kind of ebbs and flows. It kind of varies. When the economy is depressed, more Puerto Ricans move to the mainland. When the economy returns, more Puerto Ricans move back to their homeland. This is a picture of a guy with the Puerto Rican flag. Cubans. So there were two significant periods of immigration. Um, it began in the 19th century. There was 1959, mostly upper class Cubans immigrating. And then in the 1980s, uh, mostly poor unskilled laborers immigrating. In the 1980s, they were the, given the name uh, Marilitos, and that came from the term Mariel Boatlift, which described how they arrived in Florida via private boats. Dominican immigration patterns, there were four main patterns. The Trujillo era, Dominicans came to the U.S. to escape the reign of President Rafael Trujillo. Post-Trujillo, immigration slowed because of economic and social conditions. Flotilla era, Dominicans left the country by boat to escape oppressive poverty, and in the 1980s, they came seeking employment. Current demographics, there are about 5 million Puerto Ricans in the U.S. This has increased from previously 4 million. The Puerto Ricans have established themselves in cities such as Boston, Chicago, Philadelphia, Newark, Cleveland, Miami, San Francisco, etc. And many of them do live in New York. 25% of Puerto Ricans make New York their home. Cubans, there are just under 2 million, according to the 2013 census, and many Cubans settle in Miami. They like the climate there because it's similar to their na native land. There are many people from the Dominican Republic, and some have immigrated legally as well as illegally. They estimate about 300,000 illegal residents have immigrated from the Dominican Republic. Jamaicans not listed, but there are 965,000 immigrants and Haitians, 881,000 Haitian immigrants. Socioeconomic status. Puerto Ricans have the highest rate of unemployment among Latinos, currently at 28%. This is higher than the U.S. average of 16% and even higher than the Hispanic average of 25, 26%. Um, this is for first-generation Puerto Ricans, so there's some thought that second-generation Puerto Ricans have a better socioeconomic status and not as many of them are living in poverty. Uh, Cuban Americans, lower unemployment rates, Dominicans, lower medium family incomes, Jamaicans, many work in professional, managerial, or technical jobs, and Haitians often work in migrant labor or service positions. Education. So these numbers have actually increased. 76% of Puerto Ricans and 81% of Cuban Americans have graduated high school. 
Cubans have similar college graduation rates compared to the U.S. The new textbook does not have any statistics on Dominicans, Jamaicans, or Haitians. However, previous textbook discussed about 50% of Dominicans with high school graduation, 75% of Jamaicans with high school graduation, and 62% of Haitians with high school graduation. Um, I will not ask you any of these numbers on a quiz. They're just kind of for your interest and information. World view. Ethnic identity is very important, is in sustained. Part of the reason their ethnic identity is so sustained is because many people migrate back and forth between their home countries and the U.S. Dominicans actually feel that their stay in the U.S. is not permanent, so they do resist a lot of acculturation to U.S. customs. Religion. Majority of the Caribbean Islanders are Roman Catholic. Um, religion is not as important to Islanders living in the States as it is Islanders living in other parts of Latin America. Majority of Jamaicans belong to Protestant congregations, uh, Church of God, some of the Adventists. They do believe in voodoo and it is considered a folk religion. It is not contraindicated to practice voodoo in conjunction with Christianity. So they do um, practice voodooism. Let me ask you about that. Family dynamics. Puerto Rico has a, a term called compadrazgo, and this means co-parenting. So grandparents, uncles, aunts, cousins, godparents are all considered part of the immediate family and are responsible for the care of the children. Men are usually the head of the household, women usually the homemakers, and age is respected. Family dynamics. In Haiti, they have something called the placa system. This is believed to be a remnant of polygamous societies found in parts of West Africa, and men may actually have many different wives. So that's interesting. Gender roles, women usually household budget, marketing, and child care. Men are the providers and usually do the work and the farming. This is a picture of a Haitian family. Traditional health beliefs and practices. They do believe that illness is punishment from God. Fate is determines light and death. Promesca. Um, they do believe they can make a promise in exchange for health. And Caribbean Islanders believe in illness of either natural or supernatural causes. Some natural causes may include poor diet, blood conditions, bone displacement, environmental factors, etc. Supernatural causes include angry spirits, and supernatural causes must be treated by um, a voodoo manager. Traditional health beliefs and practice. They do believe that good hygiene is very important. They use a lot of botanicas. These are herbal pharmacies. And they use a lot of bodegas. Um, bodegas are small markets where they can purchase cures and antibiotics without prescriptions. Common foods. So there are many indigenous foods to the area. Um, and many staples, I'll list some of them here. These are some of the fruits and vegetables that are indigenous, so they're listed. More indigenous foods, since they're islands, fish and small birds are very, very plentiful. Hot chili peppers are common, bird peppers are common, and seasonings, I may ask you about indigenous seasonings to the Caribbean islands. So they use allspice, which is that brown um, kind of ball looking thing. Uh, they use annatto and they use racao. Racao is the greenish thing and annatto is the red looking one. Indigenous foods continued. They do have produce year round. Um, one of their staples is cassava. They will press it, dry it, grate it, and fry it into a flat loaf or bread. So this is a quick clip about cassava bread. Foreign influence. 
Spanish settlers brought many things, many animals for domestication. Um, Spanish settlers were very happy with all the fruits and vegetables in the islands, and Europeans introduced many things to trade. African slaves cultivated something really interesting called a key, and that's that kind of fruit looking thing pictured there. Um, a key is an apple sized fruit that is banned in the US because most parts of the key fruit contain a chemical that can actually lower your blood sugar to a fatal level. So it's really interesting, that's the key fruit. Staples, legumes such as cassava, starches, rice, beans were commonly used. They're usually flavored with salt and coconut milk, sometimes sweet potatoes or tomatoes. Rum. Very important beverage. I may ask you, what is the most important beverage? The answer is rum. So rum was very, very important because they could sell it for a lot of money. Molasses was very important to um, the trade industry and the distillation of rum. So I have here a picture of the slave triangle. The slave triangle was between New England the Caribbean islands and Africa. And molasses was shipped to New England to distill into rum. Rum was shipped to Africa in exchange for slaves. And slaves were shipped to the West Indies to work in the sugarcane fields. Regional variations. So Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico is known for use of distinctive flavors and sauces, starchy foods. Um, they do like pork a lot. They eat a lot of salt pork. Cracklins, bacon, etc. Oysteones are something that's used. That is uh, an oyster from the mangroves. Alcaparado is a sauce that they use, and that's actually pictured there. It's a mix of capers, olives, and pimento, and they often cook it with chicken. Um, they have more things. They enjoy stuffed tongue. They enjoy. enjoy finger foods, and they enjoy something called tan and bleak. Fufu, they enjoy. Tostones, they enjoy. Fufu is cassava balls, and tostones are pressed plantain slices. Ropa vieja is spicy beef strips cooked until they shred, and brazo Gitano is um, roast pork filled with cassava dough. That picture down there is um, tostones and, or sorry, torrones. And that is a dessert. That's the word at the very bottom of this slide. And it's a nugget like candy, usually made with peanuts. This link has a recipe for Cuban black beans. Dominican Republic regional variations. Sanchocho, some may ask you what sanchocho is. This is a stew. It may have many kinds of meats, numerous starchy, starchy veggies, all cooked in an orange juice. Locrio is similar to a Spanish paella. Chicharrones, fried pork. Mangu is mashed plantains topped with olive oil, fried onions. Salads often had cooked vegetables such as cooked potatoes, cooked squash, cooked cabbage, etc. And that's a picture of a salad in the Dominican Republic. Abichuelas con dulce. This is red beans, coconut milk, evaporated milk, whole milk, sugar, and butter. So it's kind of a sweet bean dish. And I think I will stop there for now. Okay, quick intermission. Jamaica. So a key was the fruit that we talked about that lowered the blood sugar. They did like salt cod, curried goat, mackerel rundown. This is pictured and it included a thick sauce of coconut milk and usually some sort of meat. And then jerked foods, very, very common. They usually dig a hole, um, they put fire on top of the hole, the meat goes inside, it's usually wrapped, sometimes seasoned with pimentos and mints. And this is a video of jerked foods. Let me ask you about jerked foods. Regional varieties, Haiti. 
Haiti, banana stuffed chicken, barbecued goat, griot. Griot was a sour orange juice marinated pork that was boiled and fried. Um, they made lots of patties. They made side dishes. Diri adondon is rice cooked in a mushroom broth. And then cropid, this is the mountain chicken. So this is actually pictured here on this slide. So if I asked you what a mountain chicken is, it's really a frog and it's a large tasty frog that they consider a delicacy. Daily patterns, Puerto Rico. Puerto Ricans eat three meals a day with lunch being the largest. Dessert is often eaten daily and far follows the largest meal. They often have bread pudding with rum sauce as one of their favorites. Daily patterns, Cuba. Cubans eat three meals a day. Lunch, again, is the largest. Breakfast is usually very simple, something like toast and coffee. Mid-morning break might be more coffee with something like pastries. Snacks, they might have fruit or fruit juices. Um, and they like to drink something called batitas. That's pictured there. It's a fruit juice blended with milk and ice and sometimes ice cream. Daily patterns, the Dominican Republic. Again, three meals a day with lunch typically the largest. Um, La bandera Dom dominicana is the Dominican flag and they will cook colors, cook foods in colors that represent the Dominican flag. So sometimes they'll do rice and beans, they'll do meat and chicken. This happens to be a picture of a cake on this slide. So they like to cook foods that are Colors of the um, Dominican flag. Special occasions. Lots of European influence for Christian holidays. Christmas is important and they have pasteles. Um, pasteles are savory meat mixture. They're surrounded by cornmeal or mashed plantains and they're wrapped in plantain leaves and steamed. Noche Buena, celebrated by Puerto Ricans and Dominicans. Dominicans will serve a roasted pig with rice, beans, and a salad. So Noche Buena is um, this roasted pig. They call the pig the lechon. I'm going to ask you guys what a lechon is at some point. Other special occasions, you may have heard of Carnival. Carnival is celebrated in Trinidad and Tobago, very similar to Mardi Gras. So they actually like fried Asian and Indian fritters during Carnival. Puerto Ricans do sometimes celebrate Thanksgiving and they will celebrate it with a turkey. They will stuff it with a Spanish style meat filling. Other things, carne fiabre, um, that's down at the bottom here. This is cold cuts with pickles, olives, and a green salad. Etiquette, so Puerto Rico and Cuba, they forks and knives held European style. European style means fork in the left hand, knife in the right hand with no switching hands or cutting food. Additionally, dishes are passed to the left and when not eating, hands are kept visible with wrists resting on the edge of the table. Therapeutic uses of food. So they do believe in hot cool theory. This is similar to Mexico. Um, they feel something hot would be sitting uh, sitting in the sun, you can cool down by sitting in the shade after being out in the sun. They have cold foods and hot foods, as well as cool foods, and they actually feel that this varies person to person. Dominican Republic, again, believes in hot-cold theory. They believe that too much cold causes asthma and fibroids. Too much hot causes hot flashes, as in those in men menopause. Remedies for asthma in children, um, there's quite a few. Warming foods can cure asthma. So they consider warming foods things like whale, cod liver, almond, castor oil, honey, royal jelly, onion, garlic, oregano, lemon, and aloe vera. Haiti, again, hot, cold theory but now they also believe in heavy light theory. Um, balance is very important and can affect health. They do believe times in a life are important where balance is most important. So a woman's 
reproductive cycle has to do with balance. The time of the day has to do with balance. Therapeutic uses of foods. Cubans and other Caribbean Islanders do not believe in the hot cold theory. Food-based remedies are common. Some examples, hypertension, they will use grapefruit and garlic for nervousness. They'll use linden leaf for anemia and the flu. They'll use beets for colic. They'll use anise tea for colds. They'll use tea with cinnamon, etc. This is a picture of pumpkin seed tea and it's used to cure parasites. Adaptations of food habits in the US. Um, these are listed here. Many eat Western style foods less than once a month. Caribbean Islanders on the mainland increase their consumption of convenience items. And rice still becomes, still is a staple and a main energy source for all level of a cultured peoples. Nutritional status. So this is a little bit about the nutritional status. Of note, Puerto Ricans, Cubans, and Haitians associate well-being with being a little bit larger, and they actually give a name to this, and they call it gordita. And we'll stop here and then do some Americans next. Okay, another short intermission. South America includes 12 independent nations, Argentina, Brazil, Bolivia, Chile, Colombia, Ecuador, Guyana, Paraguay, Peru, Suriname, Uruguay, and Venezuela. Immigration patterns. First recorded South Americans in the US were Chileans who came to California for the gold rush. They also had many immigrants coming to work in the mines and jobs and education were the primary reasons for immigration. Current demographics. So these are some current demographics. South American populations in the US have nearly doubled since the year 2000. Education levels. Colombians typically have lower education levels. Ecuadorians usually come from the working class and they're better educated than other Hispanic Americans but have lower education levels when compared to people from the United States. Argentinians have the highest level of education of all the Hispanic populations and Brazilians have 20% with high school diploma and an additional 22% with bachelor's degree which is higher than the US average. Religion. Vast majority are Roman Catholic. This is the result of European conquest. Catholicism was taught in Peruvian public schools. Um, other belief systems. I do have pictured the Incan gods. People who live in Peru sometimes do follow the Incan gods. And very, very few people are Jewish or Buddhist. Worldview. Family is very, very important. They actually had a lot of Italian and Spanish influence that helped shape their family structures. Extended family has frequent visits and is very involved and help mentor and raise the children. Venezuela is unique. They have increased national prosperity and this has led to relocation to urban areas. Because of this, family sizes and extended family involvement has decreased. Additionally, there are lots of cultural classes, clashes upon moving to the U.S. Men feel they have less control over their wives and families. Wives are unfamiliar with working outside of the home, and it causes many issues. Traditional health beliefs and practices. They do believe in a hot and cold system. Um, many people will self-diagnose or seek advice from mothers or friends. Sometimes they'll use spiritualist, homeopathy, exorcism, etc. They have many home remedies. They may um, buy herbs at a yerbateria. And pictured there is something called soursop, and that plant is used to treat diabetes. Traditional food habits. 
So one of the main starches is corn. They also do like rice, beef, onions, and olive oil. Tropical fruits, very similar to the Caribbean. They do have some unique native foods. They grow lots and lots of potatoes. Potatoes were first cultivated by the Incas on mountain terraces. They also eat some interesting meats. So sometimes they'll eat iguana, sometimes they'll eat alligator, they'll eat guinea pigs, they may eat wild pig, deer, or rabbit. So may ask you about guinea pigs. That's actually a picture of a guinea pig cooked there, served with some potatoes. And seafood is very popular as well. Uh, anchovies, tuna, shellfish, clams, lobster, and urchin. Traditional cooking methods, asado, large cuts of meat, entire animals cooked over smoldering wood, grilling, very popular, empanadas and empanaditas, very popular. This is pictured here and it's kind of a stuffed pocket, usually filled with meat, sometimes spices and onions or cheese. Peru and Ecuador. There are two varieties of cooking. They're the highland fares of the Andes and the lowland fares of the tropic coasts. Um, the highland fare is most unique and authentic Incan eating. They have something called charcuí. This is dried strips of llama meat. They also have something called antichucos, and that's actually pictured there. Antichucos are chunks of beef heart. They're marinated in vinegar with chilies and cilantro. Um, that's skewered and grilled, and they really like that in the Andes. Other things they eat is ceviche, which is fish or seafood marinated in lime. Chukula, this is a thick plantain and milk beverage that's spiced with cinnamon. And pisco is a grape brandy. Regional variation, Argentina, Chile, Bolivia, Uruguay, Paraguay. So Argentinians eat more beef per capita than any other country worldwide. Um, they also have lots of produce that grows there. Argentina national dish is matambre. This literally means to kill hunger. And it's a special cut of flank steak that is seasoned with herbs, rolled with spinach, hard boiled eggs, carrots, and then poached or baked. Sometimes sold cold or as an appetizer. Additional varieties of the regions, pasta is very common, beans very common, pisco, wine, frog legs, and then mate. This is a video on mate. So mate is a caffeinated beverage. It's full of antioxidants. Let me ask you about mate. It's from the leaves of a plant um, in the holly family. The dried leaves are called yerba or yerba. And it's typically drinking out of a gourd with a special straw, and the straw is called a bombilla. Regional variation, Guyana. Guyana is very close to the Caribbean, so you have a lot of Caribbean influences, such as the pepper pot. They do make something called cocoa. This is cornmeal and okra bread. They do have a little bit of Asian influence in the foods, as well as Chinese influence, as well as African influence. So they do have fufu, which is plantain paste. They have stews with meats, plantains, onions, and okra. Those are all African influence. Um, they do drink something called demerara rum, which is made from demerara sugar. This is a large unrefined sugar and it has a pale yellow color. A lot of people like to put this type of sugar in their coffee. Regional variation, Brazil. So Brazil has many Portuguese and African influences. In the 1600s, the Portuguese arrived wanting to cultivate land and then later African slaves were brought to Brazil to work on the plantations. Africans brought with them palm oil and okra. Those were some of the African influences. And the national dish of Brazil, let me ask you about this, is called feijoada completa. And this is black beans with smoked meat and sausage. It's served with rice, sliced oranges, boiled greens, hot sauces with lemon, lime, um, and sometimes cassava meal. And that's a picture of feijoada completa.
daily meal pattern. Three meals and one afternoon snack, very common as long as they could afford it. Lunch was very leisurely. In Argentina, they often spent time lounging after lunch and they would call this la sombremes. Special occasions, many have religious influences. For holidays, they often will cook a lechon, which if you remember, is the suckling pig. Um, it's kind of that pig that looks similar to a Hawaiian pig. It's cooked over a barbecue. What else? Things that they might have. Capybara, they sometimes will eat it. And that is a large rodent, and it's the largest rodent in the world, and it's related to guinea pigs. So those are allowed to eat. You're allowed to eat those during Lent. Etiquette. So traditionally, women prepare meals and men eat first. They have European-style dining, and they only eat the bread with their hands. But in Brazil, even sandwiches are cut with a fork and knife. So let me ask you about that. Salad should not be cut with a knife. They pass items to the left and keep hands above the tables. Nutritional intakes. So nutritional intakes. Parasites are pretty common. Iron deficiency anemia is pretty common. Chagas disease is pretty common. Elders have many vitamin and nutrient deficiencies despite being overweight and metabolic syndrome is very common. In conclusion, we have talked about the Caribbean Islanders and South America, what they eat, when they eat it, and how they enjoy it. All right, thank you. Um, I think that this will get better with time, so I'll try to make the next one a lot better, smoother transactions, but thank you guys for listening and see you next time. Okay, bye.